People of the internet, hello and welcome back. Today we are talking all about Orb of Water, an incredibly powerful spell that is absolutely tearing it up in PvP right now. I would not be at all surprised to see this card get banned in the next week. If you guys didn't know, once you hit Platinum Rank, you actually get to vote on two spells each week that you want to remove from competitive play for that week. So far we've had Norwegian Ridgeback in my region, as well as the Pure Totem Locomotor, but I don't think they can be banned back-to-back -back weeks, so I expect that Orb of Water will be one of those that gets banned next week. So this spell, the reason it's so good is it does incredibly high damage, and it also controls the player in this Orb of Water, allowing them to move around and basically take you into other areas. So maybe they have an atmospheric charm, maybe they have an area where Cassandra is patrolling. In duos, it gets even more insane because you can have the partner helping them set up all these kinds of crazy combos where they essentially could have both players trapped in the Orb of Water, an Incendio going underneath. I mean, it's just crazy what you can do with this spell. Now, that being said, there are some ways to get out of the spell. That's what we're going to talk about first, how you get out of it. There are also some ways to minimize the damage. Maybe you can't get completely out of it, but maybe you have a card in your hand at, at the right time that's going to help you minimize the damage. And then lastly, the worst case scenario would be that you have no cards in your hand to help you get out of it, and you have no cards in your hand to do some free damage to them. The only other thing you can do is be really smart and not play certain things, because you can actually take the situation of you being caught in the orb of water and make it worse. You do not want to do that. All right, so first let's talk about the absolute best case scenarios, which would be guaranteed ways to get out of the spell. My personal favorite is Expulso. Expulso is my favorite way to get out of the spell. It only costs two MP. It has a pretty decent range on it. So if you look at the range here, it's got a range of 28. The damage is not high, but you're not really concerned about damage. All you're concerned about is getting them knocked out of this spell, so then that frees you from the Orb of Water. That is your main focus. Now, if it's a good player, they're going to be smart, and they're going to be moving around. So they're not going to be standing stationary with Orb of Water. If you have a player that's standing stationary, it should be relatively easy to get out of as long as you have the right card in your hand at the right time. Expulso will do that perfectly. But if they're a decent player and they've been playing for a while, they're going to be moving around while they're using Orb of Water. So you're going to have to predict, at least pretty closely predict, where they're going to be. And it's not easy. Trust me, it is not easy. Sometimes you think they're going into the corner and then they'll dart over at the last second. So it's really hard to get that just right. Unfortunately, as you're going to see here, Expulso is probably the best option overall. So I'm going to show you all the other ones, but if you want to just instantly get out of Orb of Water, this is probably the best case scenario. Now, another spell that has a very similar effect to Expulso would be Inflatus. The thing about Inflatus is it costs one more MP, it does do more damage, and it does control them for a little bit longer. You know, they're going to be levitating there for a little bit. The problem with Inflatus is the range is only 20, and it, to me, it is so much harder to hit with Inflatus. I know it's only 28 versus 20, so, like, what exactly does that translate to in the game? It feels like a big difference to me. Plus, you get the added cost of that one extra MP, and in that case, I just don't think it's worth it. I do... Sometimes in duos, I prefer to use Inflatus because, I don't know, in duos, it's like there's so much action going on that a lot of times you can catch people sleeping. Maybe they just stand stationary in one spot. They think they're tucked away in a corner and there's all this other stuff going on and you don't notice them. The other thing that I really like about Inflatus in duos is that when somebody's reviving, you can use that to knock them out of that as well. So Inflatus is also a good option. Just know that it's going to be a little bit harder to hit them with that. Now, another one that I really don't see a lot of people using but is also a good way of getting out of the spell is the port key right here. Portis. The thing about the port key is that it is also very unpredictable. Even though you're casting it on yourself, because they have you in the orb of water and they're moving you around, you may not hit exactly where you need to. Even if you drop it right away, if they're moving around the orb of water, then it may not line up just right and you may not teleport anywhere. It may just drop the port key right there. That being said, it is a viable option and it is another way that you can get out of the spell. Now, there are a couple of others that I would think should be a lot better than they actually end up being. Stupefy is one of them, but it is also unpredictable. And then the way that you cast Stupefy, it's a little bit different instead of trying to get the exact area. It's like you sort of have that lane where you're casting. Expelliarmus is the same way. So with these two spells, it can sometimes work, but unlike Inflatus, and unlike Expulso, those, when you hit, it is a guarantee. Yes, it's hard to hit them, but when you hit, it is for sure, it is going to knock them out of casting Orb of Water and you will be free. With Stupefy, I've actually seen Stupefy hit before, and then they still don't break free of the Orb of Water. 
I'm not sure if that's intentional or if it's all about like how far the Stupefy launches them or the exact point where the Stupefy hits. I'm not sure. Kind of the same thing with Expelliarmus there. Now, if you happen to be a new player and you are running Tebow or you get Tebow to come up, this might be the best way to get out of Orb of Water because if you watch up here in the little preview window, look at that casting lane. It is just an enormously wide area that if you can be anywhere close to the person and it hits, you're going to be in a very good spot. It's going to knock them out of it, and then you will be free of Orb of Water. The thing about this one is, unless you're a Newt player, you're probably not going to have this card. And even if you're Newt, you're probably not going to have it in your deck. You're probably just waiting for it to pop up as a random card. I mean, it costs 4 MP. I definitely don't think it's worth it to have it in there strictly for getting out of Orb of Water. But if you're a Newt player and Tebow comes up, then that's going to be a great way for you to get out of it. Now, similar to Portkey, you also have Side Along Apparition. This one costs a little bit more. It's 3 MP. However, this is a fantastic way, essentially a guaranteed way. If you are caught in the orb and you cast this, you will get out using Side Along Apparition. The only problem here is, I mean, it is strictly a movement-based spell, whereas Portkey kind of has the added advantage of being able to get people out of the Nebulous Charm whenever they cast that. If you didn't know that, you can throw Portkey in and it'll actually break the Nebulous Charm. But with Side Along Apparition, you would essentially just be having it in there as a movement spell. That being said, if you got it, if you're running it, it is a fantastic way to get out of the Orb of Water. Now, another one that will get you out of it, but only for a brief time, is the Broomstick. Only costs 2 MP. It's actually a really fun spell to use in a lot of decks. I've been having a blast with it lately. However, because it returns you to the exact spot where you cast it from, it depends on the timing, you know, when they cast Orb of Water versus when you cast Broomstick. So it will mitigate some of the damage. You won't take all of the damage. But the problem is it returns you back to exactly where you were. So as long as they weren't moving around while you were casting that Broomstick, then you'll just return right back to where you were and you'll go right back into the Orb. However, it's such a low cost. If it's your only option, it's probably worth just going ahead and using it to mitigate a little bit of that damage. All right, so now let's say you're in a situation where you don't have any of those cards. There's no way for you to get out of the orb of water. So then my thought always goes to, are there some other things that I can do here? Based on your MP, what you currently have, do you want to use some other cards to inflict damage on them? Because yes, you're taking a lot of damage and you're stuck in this position. They're also in somewhat of a vulnerable position. For example, if you are running Thunderstorm, Thunderstorm is a great card to throw down while they're doing Orb of Water, simply because they can't cast Nebulous. There's no way they can avoid it, unless they have a lot of other summons on the field, of course, then they're going to spread the damage around. But let's say it's just you, one-on-one, -on -one, they cast Orb of Water, you're stuck in it, and you have a Thunderstorm, you have enough MP, throw it, and then they're going to take all of those hits from that, because they're just stuck there holding Orb of Water on you. Now, one that I haven't tried personally, but I read about this and thought, that actually makes a lot of sense, Aguamenti. Aguamenti is a really powerful spell. I use it a lot in the forest, in the PvE side of the game. It's a little bit harder in PvP because, you know, you have to be lined up exactly where the person is. Well, it just so happens when they're casting Orb of Water, they are perfectly in alignment with you. So if you have this spell, if you're running it in your PvP deck, then that could be a great opportunity to get some free damage on them because it does so much damage. It's going to do 10 jets of water in a straight line while you're stuck in the Orb of Water. You're lined up perfectly. It's a great opportunity to cast that spell. Now, another good one here is Atmospheric Charm, which you can cast while they are casting Orb of Water, and then it'll just kind of follow them around as they're moving. Good way to get a little bit of damage. I also forgot here, the Howler, it, it costs 4 MP, so it, it's probably not worth trying to use this just to get out of the Orb of Water, but it does get you out of the Orb of Water as well, although that one, there's a little bit of hesitation. I don't know if you've played around with the Howler too much. It is actually a really fun, powerful spell, but there's a little bit of a delay when it actually will activate it has a wide range but it's going to give them time to get out of it so yes if you happen to catch someone in the howler in the circle and they are casting orbital water on you yes it would knock them out of it and they also forgot about accio accio can sometimes have a little bit of success as well sort of similar to stupefy and expelliarmus and how that lane where you cast it Again, though, it costs 4 MP, so probably not worth using that as a way to get out of the orb. Now, let's talk about some things you do not want to do if you get stuck in the orb of water, because believe it or not, you can take a bad situation and make it much worse. First of all, you do not want to use any of your summons when you're stuck in the orb of water. Don't throw Cornish Pixies, don't drop a bomb box, don't use the cats, don't use the monster book, don't throw down a centaur. I mean, don't do any of these things that will summon in other creatures, because if you do that, they are going to get sucked into the Orb of Water as well. Companions, do not bring in companions either because they will just get sucked right in. A lot of times, I don't know, people think Ron is just so OP and he is very powerful, but people will bring Ron in 
when they get stuck in the orb of water, which do not do that because then you're going to lose Ron. He's going to get sucked up in the orb of water as well. So you want to be very, very careful about that. There's a tendency when you get stuck in that orb. Trust me, I know it's so frustrating. You just want to look down and you just want to start throwing cards out at them. You have to be careful. Take assessment of the cards that you have. First answer, can you get out of it? If you can't, ask yourself, can I do damage to them? And is it worth doing the damage to them? Or would I be better off saving this MP? Those are all the things that you got to think about in those moments. But again, what you do not want to do is just start throwing your summons out there because then you just wasted your MP. All right, so let's take a look at a duos matchup here. I was teaming up with Swamp Witch from our community. Shout out to Swamp Witch. Guys, if you are not part of our Discord yet, check the video description below. Make sure you join. We have a very active Magic Awakening community, and I've been having an absolute blast playing with you guys. Duos, Forest, we've been doing all kinds of things together in this game, and it is so much fun. So you're going to get an example of, I believe, two scenarios here, two times that Orb of Water is broken. So there's Swamp Witch casts it. And you can just see how when people are stuck in that, there's not a lot they can do. Now, the other person there, they immediately cast it as well. Confringo? Swamp Witch cast Confringo? It did not break or out of it. Incendio, Confringo, those types of spells, good ways to do damage while you're stuck in it. But they're not going to break you free of it. So I believe it's going to be a little bit before we see the next Orb of Water cast. So I get the Protego Diabolica going. And they are not happy about that. They're going to try to get me out of it here with a couple of incendios. I thought I was actually safe right there, so that's why I didn't uh, leave at first. But then another one. I go ahead and use Broomstick to escape it for a little bit. There's so much happening on screen in duos matches. I love it. It's absolutely crazy. we got two Rons on the field now. Swamp Witch has got the Death Eaters. So there's another Orb of Water. Now watch Swamp Witch. Watch, 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 watch. Expulso in the back corner. The Expulso in that back corner. A lot of times people gravitate to the corners for some reason whenever they're casting over water. So she was able to predict that movement. See where the player was going to be. Hit him with the Expulso and then it breaks the orb of water. Now there's going to be another one here in, this, in a second. You got to watch really closely to see how this one is broken. Actually, I'm going to switch to... Uh, Let's go to Swamp Witch, right? Okay, so there's the Orb of Water. What broke me out of that right there? Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to go back and watch that. I could not see what broke me out of it. So now we've got decent control of the fight. Swamp Witch has got to watch her health at 347 there. Get the Thunderstorm going. They do have a Cassandra out. Ooh, that Bewitch Snowball. Yeah, so she goes down right there. But I have one down. I'm just going to go ahead and revive, even though I do have the Inflatus. And then I immediately, I think I try to fire the Inflatus off right here. Oh, no. Orb of Water, of course. Orb of Water is going to end out the game. So, guys, I really hope this helps you out with Orb of Water. Check the video out next over on the right side of the screen. YouTube thinks that would be a great one for you. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.